Hello, welcome everyone to our class. Once again, today we'll be talking about the physical and the physical and chemical properties of alkanes. This will be the last lecture on uh, this module about alkanes. So what it means is that we'll be we'll be moving on in the next lecture. All right, let's quickly take it off immediately without wasting time. I have a beautiful quote from here from one of one of the greatest uh, boxers that lived. Muhammad Ali he said, if my mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. And this is very true. A food for thought there. Let us take it on immediately. Um, the little objective say we have, have two things that we're going to be taking away from this class. Number one, we're going to understand and describe the physical properties of our cans. And two, we understand and describe and write the reactions for each chemical properties as well. So those are the two things we're just doing. If it's just like the title said. The physical and chemical properties of alkanes. Now, physical properties of alkanes, let's move on from there. Now, of course, you know, physical properties are those properties that does not change the composition of matter. Of course, just remember this from our basic chemistry. So here we're talking about things like smell, you know, like color and all the rest of them. So that's exactly what we'll be talking about. So physical properties of alkanes, number one. So alkanes are odorless compounds that odorless compound that are non-polar molecules with weak intermolecular forces that are very non-polar molecules now when we use the word non-polar molecule what really comes to mind is the concept of hydro hydrophobicity a hydrophobic molecule so i'm going to usually use my red the hydrophobic molecule is, is a molecule or part of a molecule that is very insoluble in water and now the word phobic means fear hydro means water so hydrophobic means water fearing any molecule that does not want to interact with water is said to be hydrophobic. And the reason why they are very hydrophobic is because of the non-polar nature. Now, remember, all alkanes are made up of just carbon and hydrogen. Let's let's just try to show this. Carbon and hydrogen. So, as I have this carbon and hydrogen bond. Remember when we talked about the review in this class, I told you that the carbon and hydrogen bond is a highly non-polar bond because the change in electronegativity between carbon and hydrogen is 0 0.4 the electronegativity of hydrogen is about 2.1 that of carbon is about 2.5 so when you say 2.5 minus 2 it gives you 0 0.4 remember in one of those categories i used when we did the review we said anything that is zero, less than 0 0.5 is non-polar so the carbon to hydrogen bond every carbon to hydrogen bond is a non-polar bond so if a molecule is only made up of only carbon and hydrogen. That molecule is highly non-polar. What it means is that it's going to be highly hydrophobic. Hydrophobic meaning it will not want to interact with water. Highly is going to be highly be it will be a highly insoluble molecule when it when it comes to water. So it it does not want to interact with water at all. Therefore, it will remain insoluble in water. So the hydrocarbon chain is a highly hydrophobic or non-polar chain. Like I said, the hydro this is the chain carbon to carbon or carbon to hydrogen now it cannot hydrogen bond with water and then it can only be soluble in non-polar liquid it's, it's non-polar remember the concept of uh, dissolution is that like dissolves like polar molecule dissolves polar molecule non-polar molecule dissolves non-polar molecule so now so these hydrocarbons because they are non-polar they are only soluble in non-polar liquid and a good example of non-polar liquids here we're going to be looking at the uh, just the toluene and hexene because hex, hexane itself hexane is c6 hydrocarbon so it is just only this non-polar molecule that will dissolve any alkane now of course because of this they are less dense than water what it means is that they usually have densities that is less dense than water so if you put any of this in water now when you put your gasoline in water what do you see the gasoline settles on top of water and floats because it is less dense than water. Now, because of this non-polar nature, they have lower melting and boiling point when you compare them with other class of organic compounds of comparable weight. Of course, if you're going to look at two molecules and try to judge them based on their mole or based on their melting or boiling point, based on the physical property, you need to make sure that they have similar molecular weight. So when you compare them with molecules of similar molecular weight you find out that they have low methane and volume and the reason why they do that is because they cannot do what form strong intermolecular forces with themselves because they are highly non-polar 
Now, of course, again, the higher the molecular weight, remember, the higher the boiling and melting point. As you, as the molecular weight increases, the boiling and melting point increase, increase, increases. Just remember this, because the only have the only type of intermolecular force that exists here is the dispersion. Is the London? Okay, let me write it for London dispersion force. And London dispersion force, LDF, is only affected by the molecular weight. So if you increase the molecular weight of a sub of of the compound, you will also increase the London dispersion force. And increasing London dispersion forces, which is an intermolecular force, will increase the boiling and melting point. All right. So now let's go to let's continue with these physical properties. Now stretch and I can form what we call the homologous series the homologous series is a series of a class of compounds that are derived from the same functional group and are different from each other by this ch2 group if you now if you have two alkanes successive alkanes that differ from each other or any class of compound by this only these two group that class of compound exhibit what we call homologous series now usually homologous series are derived from the same general formula they are derived from the same general formula. And they have similar physical and chemical properties. Now, they may vary in a, they vary, not, they vary in a systematic or predictable way as their physical property, as, as their molecular weight increases. So the physical property changes from gas to liquid and then to solid as the number of carbon increases. What it means is that as the molecular weight is increasing, as the molecular weight is increasing, their what their physical properties changes the physical properties and again the reason why this happens is because of what increase in dispersion now from one to four carbons one to uh, alkanes that contain one carbon from methane to carbon number four which is butane are uh, gases at room temperature now those of them that go from carbon number five which is pentane to 17 carbons to C17 will be colorless liquid. And then anything that is 18 and above will be solid, will be white and waxy solid. And now let's look at, now you remember when I showed you this picture in, that was on our, in, when we were talking about, okay, nomenclature of Arkansas, that is where I brought this off. Now when we were talking about this nomenclature of Arkansas, then I showed you this table to represent the unbranched, of course, this is what I told you, the unbranched, Okay, or stretch chain, whichever one you want to use, stretch chain. That easy to name because they don't have any branching or stretch chain. Now let's see what is happening here. Now let's try to see if this is a homologous series. Let's see. Now you know this is bigger than this by one here. Let's see. If you do two minus one here, will give you one carbon. Six minus four will give you CH two. This is what we call the CH two group. Let's do between this and this. Ten minus okay let's see four minus three will give you c 10 minus eight will give you ch2 so if you look at each of these successive group they differ from each other by ch2 and class of compounds that do this are usually called homologous series remember we said they are derived from the same general formula they have the same physical and chemical properties and we also said that as you go down the group as the remember as we're going down this group now the what the molecular weight is increasing and as the molecular weight increases, what happens? The physical properties changes from gas, gases to liquid and from liquid to solid. Remember that. Remember we said from the, okay, let me use a different color this time. I said from this to four are gases at room temperature. And I said from here to here are liquid. And then we said from 17 and above are solid at room temperature. Now we also said that as you go down, like as you go down this, as I drew them, remember the molecular weight increases, and as the molecular weight increases, the boiling, the, remember the the boiling point increases, boiling point increases, and the reason why boiling point increases is because of what? Is because of let me use a different color this time because of increase. Because of the increase in dispersion forces, in London dispersion 
forces. Don't forget that. That is why. All right. Enough of this. We will now go to the next slide. Let's now talk about the reactions of alkanes. Now, alkanes are the least reactive or class of organic compounds. Like again, because they are highly nonpolar. The carbon to hydrogen bond is highly nonpolar or hydrophobic. So the only reaction they undergo is the combustion reaction. And this combustion reaction is so important because the combustion reaction, combustion is an exothermic reaction, releasing huge amount of heat, huge amount of energy. And this is the reason why the application of most alkanes is in combustion. So this reaction accounts for the wide use or application of hydrocarbons as fuel. Now remember gasoline, we use it in combustion engine to power our vehicles and various uh, machines in both in household and you know both yeah so in, in some places they use gasoline in household generators as well and then we use propane propane too is in grills like i said in one of the classes already too methane is used in some countries also as a household what gas in cooking as well so now the combustion is just one reaction but it's important i mention this now complete combustion in the presence of enough or adequate supply of oxygen would generate carbon dioxide and water just listen to this in exam if i ask you if i ask you complete the combustion reaction i will tell you whether it is in excess or in or in insufficient amount of oxygen in as in enough oxygen carbon, the product gives you carbon dioxide and water now in incomplete combustion is when you, you don't have enough oxygen. So when you don't have enough oxygen for this combustion, it usually generates what carbon carbon monoxide and water. Remember, carbon monoxide is a dangerous respiratory poison. So this occurs, like I said, when there is not enough oxygen. And we're going to see the reactions in the next page. Now look at the reaction. So the first reaction here is complete combustion. This is the complete combustion. In complete combustion, I told you that it is going to be generating carbon dioxide, CO2, this CO2, and water. Now, in th this is organic chemistry. When I ask you this reaction, I don't expect you to just write the formulas for me. No, you're going to be writing for me the structures of this compound. So here, what I have is methane. This is a methane. Remember, this is C1, is methane. Methane is reacting with oxygen, of course. This is the Lewis structure of oxygen. Remember that. You don't need to put this in this class. You don't need to. You don't need to put this. I'm just trying to refresh your mind a little bit. Now, so oxygen O2 react with methane CH4 to form carbon dioxide and water. The equation is balanced. In exam, I wouldn't want you to balance the equation. What I need from you is to give me the complete product, the complete structure of the product and the reactants. Again, now, in when you don't have this, is, remember, this is complete combustion when you have adequate or enough oxygen, adequate oxygen. Now, in incomplete combustion, this one is incomplete. Remember, okay, again, each of these reactions releases what? Huge amount, huge amount of heat or energy that is used either for grilling or powering our what? Automated machines. All right. Again, in incomplete combustion, remember again, this one is incomplete combustion. It generates carbon monoxide and water. That's what it generates. So here, methane again reacts with what? Oxygen. With oxygen here to generate carbon monoxide here. You're just going to have only this. And here, usually carbon has, has that. Okay, now to generate carbon monoxide and water molecule. That's exactly what is up. Like I said again, I don't need the Louis, I don't need the long pairs here to be drawn. What I just need is the correct structure of this. When I say incomplete combustion, remember again, in incomplete combustion, you have insufficient amount, amount of O2. You have carbon monoxide. And water so these are just the reaction now i have a picture here i took this picture from my grill this is the commonest household application of this so you use your propane remember this is the, where the propane tank is you have the propane tank i should have shown you that in my picture a propane tank is used for you to cook or grill your steak your your hot dog or whatever you have so this is the commonest application of this 
class of compounds. And now the last thing we're going to talk, the last but not the least is just the reflection one. Like I said, these guys are not very reactive. They don't have a lot of things going on with them. Now the question says, arrange the following in increasing boiling point and give reason for the answer. Let's see, we have A, B, and C. So we should arrange them. So we're going to start from the list. Now let's talk about a few things. We talked about a few about a few of these already in our review. That's exactly what we're going to be applying in all the physical because the physical properties of compounds we're going to be talking about is the boiling point, the melting point, the solubility, which has to do with the polarity. Remember again, these are alkanes; they are non-polar. Now, the first thing you need to look at when you talk about comparing alkanes is to look at their molecular weight. Remember, we said as the molecular weight increases, the dispersion increases, and as the dispersion increases, the boiling and melting point increases. Remember, we're talking about just the boiling point here. Now, if you look at this, let's count the, num the number of carbon is the way to look at that. You don't have to calculate all the molecular weight. But if I count this now, this will give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is the can. Of course, the formula for the can is C10H22. So it has more carbon. Let's count this one and see how long this is. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, this is C8. Remember, it's going to be 8 times 2 plus 2. So this is going to be two, 8 times 2 is 16. 16 plus 2 give you 18. And then let's count this one too. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, this will have the same formula. So this is just telling you that this is an nice structural isomer of this. So both of these. So this is still C8, H18. Now you can decide to calculate the molar mass, but from here you know the one that is the longest. Now, so which one is going to have the highest boiling point? Will be the one with the highest molecular weight. So this is going to be the highest. So if you are say in increase in terms, I'm going to start with the smallest. So if this is the highest, which one will be the least? Now, here now, molecular weight will not play a role again because both of these have the same molecular weight. So how will you determine that? We're not going to bring in something which we call the surface area as we did in the review. The surface area is the amount of space that something occupies. And the higher the surface area of a substance, the higher the molecular weight. Now, which of these two, look at, when I drew this, this occupied, look at how long this was. It occupied more space. Whereas when I drew this one, what happened? This one only occupied a smaller space. What is it telling you? Branched molecules occupy less space. Just write it. Branched compounds occupy less space so this occupies less space and that makes sense this occupies the less space you can easily squeeze this but this will take you time to squeeze this occupy more space so the less space a compound occupies the lesser its boiling and melting point so we have our reason so between these two this is going to be the smallest because it has the least surface area so if i'm going to arrange this thing i'm going to say c c is going to have the, okay, I'm going to use a different color here. C is going to have the lowest boiling point. Why? Because it has the least surface area because it is branched and condensed. Followed by which one? B with less than B. And B will be less than A. Oh, let me use small letter. It will be less than A. Why is B less than A? Because B has lower molecular weight than A. So this is the arrangement. So if you want to stay your reason, what will be your reason? The reason is because one, you can say, okay, let me use, to use this color. C is, has the least boiling point because C occupies, C occupies the least surface area because because it is branched that's the reason that's why it has the low so c occupies the least of area because it is branched and hence it has it is branched and has the least london dispersion force so again a is the highest why because it has the greatest molecular weight 
molecular weight. Let me write that. Or you can say longest carbon chain, whichever way you want to put it. So, and what it means is that it will have a will have the greatest dispersion. And because it has the greatest dispersion, what happens? It will have the greatest or the highest boiling and melting point. So this is how we do this problem. Once again, thank you for listening. We've come to the end of this class. Bye at this point.